Hey everyone, what's going on and welcome back to the channel and I figure you know I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 just yet but I figure you know what let's go back and review Volume 1 and 2 for the channel this week leading up to this weekend going to see Volume 3. So today we're going to talk about Volume 1, Guardians of the Galaxy. Now again when James Gunn tackled this property for Marvel for the MCU this was a group of characters that a lot of people had never heard of. Now, yeah, even though I read comics back in the day, and I still read comics now, this was really a group of characters that I was not familiar with. So, you know, to, for James Gunn to bring them into the MCU so early in, in the Marvel Universe, you know, lifespan, it was a really big deal. It was also a really big leap of faith by Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios, taking a group of characters that a lot of people had not heard of and bring them to the big screen. And James Gunn knocked it out of the park. I hadn't seen this film in a while. And it completely holds up. Nothing has failed as you know over time. And it's not it's not that old of a film, but it was, you know, from phase one of the you know of Marvel. But still, it's just so much fun to watch this one and i loved it even more this time around watching it just picking out certain things and especially knowing how things would have progressed you know through the years for the mcu it's just really nice to go back and take you know this earlier the earlier steps the earlier you know uh life basically you know you know when when the marvel universe was still young you know on the big screen but you know like i said this one it really comes down to with this film in particular not just the directing from James Gunn, but it comes down to the actors and actresses that were chosen for the roles in this film. Chris Pratt as Star-Lord is absolutely fantastic. It is a role that I really think he was born to play. This is just a fantastic, his, really, his real first big role coming up of you know, being in Parks and Recreation on TV. And he did a great, great job. I... I can't, I, I can never picture any, it's one of those things where you picture certain roles for certain characters, you can never picture anybody else ever filling those boots, and I think that's, it's, you know, the same for Star-Lord as well, Peter, the Peter Krill, uh, Quill character, Chris Pratt is fantastic, absolutely fantastic, perfectly cast for that, that role, Zoe Saldana as Gamora, the potential love interest for Star-Lord, but she kicks all kind of ass, all on her own, she is fantastic. Fantastic. Again, you, you've seen that. I mean, she, you know, was in the, the newer Star Trek films, and she just brings a lot of action to the roles that she's in. And I really, really enjoyed her as Gamora. I think the interaction between her and Star Lord, fantastic. Even the interactions of her and Nebula as well. Drax. Let's talk about Drax. Dave Batista. Now, I watched Batista, you know, when he first started wrestling. So just to see him progress and become an actor, and a pretty darn good actor, too, in his own right. I, I never would have really believed that or pictured that, you know, from his earlier days, you know, in, in the WWE. But he did a fantastic job really stepping up, and he's great. I mean, he is the true, like, you know, um, comic relief for this film. He's so serious in his delivery but it's so freaking hilarious with his delivery and, and again again the interaction between all these characters is just fantastic they all work perfectly well and i think if you take any of the main guardians if that if that doesn't work i think it's going to sh show throughout the entire film if it doesn't work the way that the, but everybody gels so well in this team and that, I think, just gives it more of a realism to it. And I think that helps the film so, so much. Um, Rocket. Rocket Raccoon. You know, Bradley Cooper. Who would have thought that, you know, Bradley Cooper... I mean, some people would say, well, no, do you really need these big-name actors for those roles? But, you know, I really think that he brings a lot of personality to Rocket that I can't picture anybody else voicing Rocket at this point. I think he just really brings it. I can't even tell that it's Bradley Cooper, but I can just... You know that he brings so much life, you know, to that, that fictional character. I mean, they're all fictional characters, but he just brings so much life to the Rocket character. I mean, Vin Diesel as Groot, just saying, I am Groot. So simple. But yet, he still is able to emphasize what he's trying to live, what he's trying to get across. The different emotions, just by saying those words. And I think that is really, you know, that... 
It's a really huge, huge deal because it actually helped, especially when you get to the end of the film. Like everything just, you know, grew. I mean, a lot of people have seen this film, and you know, you know, eventually, you know, yes, we know what happens to Groot at this, you know, at the end of this film. But just the the empathy of what he showed, you know, the, the care and the love that he winds up, you know, showing for his fellow guardians really comes through big time at the end of this film. And I just think it's it's like overall, I really there's so much action and there's comedy. And but it's not so much comedy, like it's not so much, you know, laugh out loud where it's gonna be you know, overtake the rest of the film. There's just, there's a lot of heart to this film. And that's really what I really love about, you know, volume one. I, I do I little spoiler, I do enjoy volume one more than volume two. But and I do like volume two a lot. But with volume one, I think there's just so much heart and soul put into this film just by the actors, the actresses, the, the story that's being told, you know, by the direction, you know, what James Gunn is, you know, able to get across with this film. You know, he just he takes characters that a lot of people didn't really you know know, you know, an unknown property and to put that much of, you know, of a gamble by you know, by the MCU, by Disney, by Marvel into the into a property like this. And it's really it's paid off big time for all these characters, you know, for Marvel in general. It's been an incredible, successful, you know, thing, you know, for them. You know, this franchise has been incredible. And I just, I really, I can't say more about this film. Just, there's just so much. Our first introduction of seeing, the, you know, seeing Thanos on screen. Just incredible. Seeing that character brought to life on the big screen. And I really, I enjoyed it. And, you know, seeing some of the newer MCU films that haven't always hit the mark for me going back and really revisiting one of the, you know, the earlier ones yeah that it really shows just you know it was like really hitting on all cylinders for you know for marvel at the time and i've, I've heard really good things about volume three so i'm looking forward to coming on here and talking about that one once i see it but yeah, i just i wanted to go back and check this one out to me this is a solid nine out of ten i i absolutely hands down, believe this is a 9 out of 10 for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. The music, talk about the music. The music is fantastic. I mean, you can't, when you talk about, you have the awesome mixtape, Volumes 1 and Volume 2 for, for you know, for the second film. But the, the music just, there are certain songs that are put into this as certain, you know, sections, certain parts of the film that you wouldn't think would work. You'd be like, wait a minute, that song is Doran playing during that scene? How's it going to work? But they make it work. And that's what's so beautiful about it, is they take this, even the opening, one of the opening scenes, when you first introduced to Chris Pratt, you've grown up as Star-Lord. You wouldn't think that these songs would fit, but they fit, and they do it so well. It was a, just... An incredible collection of songs put to both of those films. And like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing how, you know, what the uh, music selection is like for Volume 3 when I get a chance to see that one. But yeah, definitely, if you haven't seen this, if you haven't seen it, seen this at this point, you got to go check it out. It's a 9 out of 10. It is absolutely solid from start to finish. Heart and soul, action, comedy, science fiction. Everything a com you can want from a comic book film is all wrapped up into one with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. And like I said, the music to boot, come on, you can't you can't go wrong. It's it's incredible, incredible soundtrack for an incredible, incredible film. So like, subscribe, and comment if you get the chance, and I will catch you another episode. Catch you later. Bye.